I'm here with uh, Canadian's Vice President of Player Personnel and Director of Amateur Scouting, Trevor Timmins, who just finished his 13th year running the draft for the Montreal Canadiens. How important is the draft to a team's long-term success? Well, the, the draft is a building block for any NHL team nowadays, and every team will tell you that. It's the uh, only way to accrue you know, top six forwards, top four D-men, and starting goalies. It's just too hard. There's no free agents available nowadays that can fill those roles. When you look at a guy like Kerry, I know you always tell us we have to wait four or five years to really see how a draft went. It's been 10 years since you drafted Kerry fifth overall. How proud are you of that pick? That's got to be a, a pretty big source of pride for you and your scouting staff. Yeah, I'm just uh, happy for our staff, scouting staff, that um, you know, it was 10 years ago that we took a lot of heat when we picked Kerry. But uh, our job is to project and to have foresight. And you know, we always projected Kerry to be a future franchise player. And at the draft, on draft day 10 years ago, he was the last guy on the board that we thought would have a chance to become a franchise player at that time. And he proved us right. So let's talk about some of the 18-year-olds that we've, we picked up this year in 2015. Noah Juleson, obviously, you must have had a little bit um, more exposure to him this year, being that he plays with last year's first round pick, uh, Nikita Sherback in Everett. Did that kind of help you solidify that choice that that was your guy in the first round? Well, Noah was a guy that sort of went under the radar the first half of the season. And the reason being that he was injured during that Team Canada under 18 selection camp for the Ivan Halinka tournament uh, last August. So he didn't get to play on that team because he had suffered an injury in the camp. And he had a bit of a slow start, but um, you know, we were on him all throughout the season and noticed the steady improvement that he made each and every month. And come playoff time, he was a real top-notch playoff performer, and that really solidified what we saw in him. When you, so when you talk about improvement, what really strikes me when you look at his stats, I think he improved his offensive production by about 400% this year. Is that a case of a guy rounding out his skill set? Is it just a case of opportunities playing on the power play or more offensive roles? I think... For him, it's, it's a, his team played more of a defensive style and, and for him to get that many points was is pretty good. But he did play on, on one of the PP units and PK, he did it all. He, he's, he's a solid player in all aspects of the game and he, is, he still has a lot of room for growth and development and uh, we look forward to helping him get there. When After the draft, you mentioned that our, our Swedish scout, uh, Krista Rockstrom, was very excited to see Lucas Vedemo still available in the third round. And I remember speaking to you a few years ago, and you said that with social media and with YouTube, it was pretty rare we weren't going to see another Datsuk situation where a guy flies pretty far under the radar. So how did that happen with Lucas Vanemo? Because it almost seems like no one knew anything about him. Well, Lucas uh, had a, suffered a severe injury last year and missed most, most of the season. And this season, he was a year older than, you know, he's a 96 born, and this year's draft crop was 97 born. 97 born so. He wasn't on any of the national teams because of missing so much time last year. Um, so this season, you had to see him in his league. And uh, so a lot of the North American scouts didn't get exposure to him, and that's probably why he slipped a little bit in the draft. How would you, since it's going to be hard for people to find clips of him online, how would you describe him in terms of projecting him as a future NHLer? Well, only time will tell, but he, he's got a uh, real strong character and really good hockey sense, and he's a good skater. so. We like the way that he disperses the puck and makes his line mates better and creates offense. So, you know, he's going to need time and he's, he's slated to uh, play for Team Sweden at the under 20 World Junior Camp Games in Lake Placid this coming August. Matthew Bradley will go over to the Western Hockey League. This was his first year there, and uh, I know you mentioned he plays behind two other veteran centers, so he's playing more of a third-line role. But he still managed to put up 40 points as a rookie in the WHL. Are you projecting him to be more of a shutdown guy? Can you see him in a Thomas Placanitz type mold as a two-way center? Well, if you look back you know, at his stats, historically he's always been a producer, a point producer. So I think he'll eventually, next season, I, I think you'll see his point total uh, really rise up and the year after especially. He's a guy that, uh, again, he thinks the game very well on both sides of the puck, but I see him more in an offensive role moving forward. You guys went local with uh, the sixth round pick, Simone Bork, a Greenfield Park native who plays for Ramuski. He's, I've seen uh, scouting reports, he's a bit of a leader, a character guy, not the biggest defenseman. Would you put him in sort of a Josh George's category in terms of his future potential as an NHLer? Well, right now he's just over six feet. I, I think he still has some growing to do, some growth potential left. 
He played behind some more high, higher profile players in Ramouski, obviously the, the Quebec League champions. And so he's sort of, you know, hidden behind those higher profile guys. I, I think this is a guy that'll, you know, will, will make people notice him this year in more of a leadership role and, and more, you know, first unit PP, first unit PK, all, all those things. So I think uh, the best is yet to come from Simo. And finally, Jeremiah Addison, the seventh round pick and Ottawa 67's guy. You mentioned that he's family friends with P.K. Subban's brother, Jordan. And I actually read that Matthew Bradley is family friends with the Gallaghers. So when you see that kind of family connection and you have the guys on your Rolodex, do you get in touch with guys like P.K. or their families to, to get another character evaluation when you see a guy like Jeremiah that you could easily find out more information about? Well, it's, a, it's another reference tool, yeah. We, 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 check, we check with coaches, trainers, you name it. Um, with Jeremiah, he's, he played in my backyard. I live near Ottawa, so I've seen a lot of him, especially in the playoffs. He was a huge playoff performer for the 67s. He scored a lot of big goals for them and uh, had a good run. I see him as a little bit of a, a late developer. You look at his stats last year, he really uh, brought his stats up when he was went over to the Ottawa 67s in the summertime from Saginaw. And uh, his, I think he's a little bit of a late bloomer, like I said, and he's a power forward type. He's a guy that uh, likes to shoot the puck, likes to play in the paint, and um, as I said, his biggest contribution uh, comes when the game's on the line and in the postseason. So now we have five players that you picked up at the draft this year, a huge night for them and their families. What happens next for them? How does the process work? They start working with Martin Lapointe, Rob Ramage. How much do you see them and what do you expect from them? Well, from here, uh, the amateur scouting staff, including myself, hand the reins over to Marty Lapointe and Rob Ramage. And their first stop is here at this uh, our summer development camp, which they'll learn and they'll receive tools to help them, you know, become a pro. They have to start living their lives like a pro. Hopefully most of them are already on that path, but you know, they have to learn about proper nutrition and training and ways to improve on the ice, their skating, their puck skills. And that's what this camp is aimed at. So now from here on, um, both Marty and Rob will, will keep in touch with these young players. They'll go see them play and meet with them, go on the ice with them for practice, take them to dinner, be like a big brother and, and give them advice. All right, so now we'll have to wait four or five years. We'll reconvene, we'll roll back the tape. Hopefully we'll be seeing some of these five kids being either leaders or leading scorers in the NHL with the big club sooner than later. We'll keep our fingers crossed.